Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to Jason is a Social Scientist. By Mouth Daily. Till number 1033. You might be wondering what the show is about. People often wonder what the show is about. The premise is deceptively simple. I take my HIV medication live on the book of face each day in front of friends. Hey, Devante, Slamma Jamma, Contreras, in front of friends, family, and strangers. I do so in order to embrace stigma, dispel ignorance, and find support. Hi, Sandy and Jeanette. Dang it, dang it. Thank you for your support. Will Farrell, thank you for your support. Uh, if I'd have people take only, hi, Tasha. If I'd have people take only one thing away from this show, it would be the knowledge that HIV is preventable. If you're HIV negative, there's a once a day pill you can take. They call it PrEP or pre-exposure prophylaxis, the pill is Truvada, and if you're HIV negative, hey Jory, and if you're HIV negative, you take it once a day, and it works like a highly effective chemical condom, it prevents HIV. But if you're already HIV positive like me, treatment is prevention by taking my medication every day and maintaining an undetectable viral load. Hey Angel, thanks for your support. Hey Amy, uh, Baga gets me higher than Faka. Uh, but if you're already HIV positive like me, welcome Wendy. Uh, treatment is prevention. By taking my medication every day and maintaining an undetectable viral load, it makes it so I'm not contagious. U equals U. Undetectable equals untransmissible. You could fuck me bareback all day long. And all night long too, because I'm a stallion. And never catch HIV for me. It's a brave new world. The future is now. And it's 1969. Free love. Woo! Jessica. Oh, Esther, I'm sorry. Group hug. I can just imagine. Group hug. Uh... Woo! Woo, says Tasha. Dang it, dang it, dang it to heck. Um... Welcome to my sister's home. That's awesome, Devante. What else can you do with your mind? <laughs> hey, Nishala. Wendy understands. Oh, hugs for everybody. Hugs all around. So, yeah, I met my sisters. Hey, Andy, Cody. Hey, Carla. You ever do that when you were kids? Like, another kid would put his hands here, crisscross, and then you look inside, and it looks sort of like a vagina. <laughs> it's hard to do it with one hand. The other hand there. Just a bit, just a bit. So, uh, got to talk about uh, my HIV with my 91 year old aunt. I don't think she even knew what HIV was. She's like, I hear you have an illness. She's hard of hearing, so like the, and like we're a family get together and she's like, so I hear you have an illness and I'm like, yeah, I have HIV. Oh, HIV. <laughs> and then she's asking me, so how did you get it? She's like, what happens to you now? I'm like, I'm okay. <laughs> she's like, uh, I got it sexually. Yeah, sexually. It was, it was all right. I don't know. Oh my God, this is why I stay home. Just moments like that, but I don't know. It's fine. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. Cheers, Esther. That's just okay too. Oh 
don't make me laugh, then well, it's, uh, you want to talk more about hand vaginas? Um, I might talk my sister into, uh, oh yeah, I forgot Tasha's husband goes away, right? For like, I forget why. Uh, I tend to come from a pretty conservative family. And certainly in the past, I haven't, uh, I um, I don't know, you know, like just I remember hearing as a kid, the, the faggot word being tossed around sometimes, Not like, especially extended family stuff, I don't know, but, you know, I don't know. It was said in movies and stuff too. I like go back and watch older movies. Same deal. Yep, still at my sister's death. I think I might ask her to use her shower tomorrow. It's an amazing shower. It's got like two heads and like uh, no level or like, I don't know, it's like zero, I don't know, entry. I don't know, like you can just walk right in and then as it doesn't have a drain, it just slopes down into like a slit in the wall, on the floor. It's really cool. And then there's one handled shower, another one just sprays down on you. And it's like pretty incredible. It's like walking into a g gym shower. The pantry's really cool, right? I'm moving in. Got a nice bedroom here for me. My own bathroom. I'm moving in. Maybe she'll let me set up. I think there's enough room in her in her kitchen. I can set it up. The I can move on top of her cupboards. I'm I'm okay, Andrew. Permanently what? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't think my sister let me go on top of her brand new cupboards. I'm just joking. I'm at my sister's house, Nina. I'll be going home tomorrow. Yeah, that might work, Melissa. I, <laughs> I don't know, I'm not moving into my sister's house, Angel. Thank you, Devonta. Devonta, you always make me feel good. Thank you. You're too kind. You know, I, I certainly wouldn't say I'm above it, right? But that would that I would be certainly humbled to. To you know, maybe humbling is good sometimes, but. Uh, I'm gonna really hope for the best that I'll be able to keep my house and I don't know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what the future brings. Hey Audra. I don't know. Hey 
Deirdre speaks. Hello. Davina Connors too. <laughs> you like the more intimate view? This is the way that my, my well, this is the way the show's been uh, in the past, certainly with how it started off. And, and now, uh, you, are you two still on the road? You guys stopping in from the road? Uh, so, 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 certainly some of my viewers know Deirdre. Uh, she, she also takes her, her medication live. But Davina has her own podcast, Positively D's. Shout out to both of you. Uh, they're like on a road trip, uh, I think to like a big HIV conference or something. So, smiling and dressed was surprised when I seen you. <laughs> You're expecting me naked and frowning and naked. No, I'm just doing like on my bigger set just once a day, once once a week now. Maybe twice a week, but not this weekend. Just on the weekends, but not this weekend because I'm. She was good, Mama G. But I was I was telling people before she's hard of hearing. She's 91 years old, and uh, I think the boys or something told her that I was ill. They didn't, I, <laughs> and. I don't know if they must have told like I was in the other room and uh, Alex comes in and he's my eight year old and he's like, great aunt Mary wants to talk to you. And I'm like, okay, what, what, what does she want? She's like, I hope it's okay. I, is it okay if I told her you have HIV or if it's okay if I tell her? And I'm like, did you tell her already? And she's like, yeah, I did. And, uh, and so then he walked me in there and she was busy talking to someone else, but then we sat down and we talked for a while. Uh, and then she asked me, so I hear you're ill. She, like I said, she's hard of hearing. And so I'm like, yeah. And she's like, what do you have? And I'm like, I have HIV. <laughs> it's a big family get together. I haven't seen any of them or most of them since I was diagnosed. And uh, I don't know what they know. I don't know, I'm certain. <laughs> I have no idea. And so, uh, yeah, um, I'm like, I, <laughs> I have HIV, and then, oh, you totally, <laughs> I wish she would come, dear Joe, someday, someday. Um, anyway, so, and then she, I don't think she knew, even know what, knew what HIV is, it's like, what happens? And she's like, how did you catch it? <laughs> I'm like, sexually! No. <laughs> it was... I don't know. You, all right, you have to get on. <laughs> you haven't taken yours yet either? I can bring on guests right now. So maybe we could do a joint pill taking, but. Do you boys have a pretty clear understanding about it? Yeah, are they, they're still in the age where it's not quite processable. My Jack is certainly like getting to the point where he can process it pretty well. And he's like, he's been pressing me too about how I contracted it. And I just like, right now I've been punting you know, I'm open that I can <laughs> just tell you when you're older, basically what I'm saying. And I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not. But he's like, keep, he, that made him more curious even then. He's like, did you get it sexually? Oh, probably not sexually, did you? <laughs> probably not. And I'm like, I'll talk to you when you're older. And I don't think they really heard today. Oh, thank you, John Joseph. I know the cat's quieter tonight. Jambo went crazy on Friday the 13th. Oh, you're not going on the road till the 23rd. Oh, Davina, you'd totally be welcome too. That'd be so exciting. Uh, but like that just, like I said, Tasha, that just made him more curious now. And he's like, 
he's like, did you get it from a needle stick? Like, yeah, I think he asked about a needle stick, and I'm like, no, I didn't get that one. <laughs> oh. Just awkward. I don't know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping. Like, I, I feel like I'm counting my uh, eggs before they're hatched. I did get an email about it. I haven't heard back yet again. I, I jumped on the reply, but now I'm just like, I get really nervous. Like, like I shouldn't even post it about it. <laughs> Tell them it was Illuminati Jambo. That's, I don't know. My wife said, asked if, can we just tell them you got it for a needle stick? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to lie to them. Like, <laughs> lying to them for me is just not an option, but the truth is awkward though too, so. I don't know. Because then once I tell them sexually, then they're like, I don't know, then they're like, what about you and mommy? And and then I have to explain that we are in an open relationship. And I don't know. It'll just be, I don't know, I should, shouldn't, maybe I should just be more open and like, not like, just teach them that everyone's human and I don't know. Oh, thank you, Deirdre. Oh, well, we were, <laughs> I know, I know I certainly did, enjoyed and another audience enjoyed too. And you, you spent a long time watching our show or watch the show. So I don't know, you, you really put in your time hanging out here. And I always, I really appreciated your support from the beginning. Or not from the beginning, but from the beginning that we met, from the moment we met. I know that's one of the, uh, like, Devante, I think that's one of the, like, even if the show doesn't do anything else, and hopefully it's helped somebody, you know, like, but even if it does nothing else, uh, I would kill, I would kill, maybe, I might kill for having just hours and hours and hours of my parents rambling on about nothing. And I don't know, just uh, like that'd be just an incredible gift. And so that's something that hopefully they'll have someday. I pretty much share everything else with them about it. They know I take the pill every day to stay well. They know that it would take me a long time to get sick if I took my medi stopped taking my medication. Like they've asked a lot of questions already, and you know I can tell them. You know, truthfully, it would take years, like maybe ten years, before I were to get really, really sick. Um, man, so they they don't have to worry about me missing one day. Uh, even though I don't really miss very many days, but um, they're not scared of like hopefully I don't hopefully I feel like they're not scared of any of me being in any immediate danger. Uh, yeah, you know sometimes I worry about Facebook. I don't know. I feel like there's something on my nose. I don't know if it's a pimple or what. Um, good night, Angel. Yeah, or I upload this show to YouTube too, but I always feel like <laughs> I'm gonna get banned for some reason or another. Hey, April. Shout out to you. Supporter, thank you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure my sister's gonna let me shower. I can't wait to show you guys the shower tomorrow. 
fancy, fancy shower. I have most of them down, uh, backed up to a, a good chunk of them backed up to a hard drive too. Uh. <laughs> Mark, it's gonna be every Friday and Saturday we'll do the full set, the full, sh the whole shebang. I should probably get to sleep pretty soon. I wanna be up during the day somewhat. Me too, Devante. <laughs> I think they might start some reruns pretty soon. If you catch my drift. Oh, I hope. I hope we can start watching some. <laughs> or you, hopefully you can start watching some soon. We'll see. We shall see. Uh -huh. Good night, Deirdre. You saying good night? I will. I'll take care of myself. Hey, Jeanette. What are you clapping for? Probably a morning shower, late morning shower. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, Deirdre was gonna come for an I Love Lucy edition, I think. So maybe we'll have to plan her trip Round trip. I don't know if Davina, Davina will be down for that though. That'd be super cool. That'd be like killer. That would be a killer live. The three of us. <laughs> I can't even imagine. That'd be too much fun. Oh, thank you, Jeanette. Um, so some of you might be wondering what the show is about. Good evening, Ronnie. You just caught us. I'm, I'm just about to end. Audra, thank you for your support. I missed you too. Uh. Hmm. I was going to say something about uh, Kamala Harris. <laughs> I keep thinking about, about her and you. I don't know why. Well, I, I just feel like, and tell me, like, tell me what you think about this. Like, don't you think that, you know, I know you think that, uh, or you've said that the whole system's corrupt and they're all bad, but I feel like, don't you, like, I always feel like there's some people that go into it, uh, at least feeling like they can do some good and, and I, I feel like there is like a public service, like there's a public service aspect that hopefully it motivates a certain percentage of people in the criminal justice system. I know the system's fucked. I, 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 I get that. But I also like the fact that if, <laughs> if so, I, have, I can call 911 if someone's trying to murder me and, uh, and policing is, as a concept is a, I don't know, like, I don't know. Anyway, I think you do, I think you do great work, Audra, regardless. I think you will do amazing work. Yeah, prosecutors and, yeah, mostly prosecutors because Kamala Harris, but like police officers and like anybody, like I think, I'd like to think that at least some of them are motivated for I don't know, for the public good. Hey, Joe William. 
I don't know about, I don't, you know, I don't know Kamala Harris. I'm not defending Kamala Harris in particular because I don't know her record on, uh, but to me, it, like, it does it's not a, a automatic disqualifier. Not ever, not under no circumstances. Like, I certainly, I'm, I certainly would. I can understand it, like, especially like in you know, in some, for some people, it's not safe to call the police. But with enough privilege, it's. No, I don't know. I don't. This is a touchy subject. Uh, Yeah, because there's, I don't know, a whole generation of black men that, like, taken off the streets for, like, yeah, for really unfair reasons. Mm, I, I don't know. I'm not, I don't want to come off as, like, defending the criminal justice system. Because it's fucked on so many levels, including uh, the criminalization of HIV, but that's a whole other subject, too. I don't know. I was going to go to bed. Oh, I think that's smart, Nishchala. Uh, if someone was trying to kill me, though, or if someone had just raped me or something, I'm going to call the cops. Maybe I should just buy a taser. If, if I was in mortal danger, <laughs> I would call. I would call them. I've actually had some pretty good experiences with police officers. I don't know, I think I'm charming. <laughs> One time I uh, got pulled over and I had probably had three drinks or something. And I was, I was probably like 22 and I was like so nervous. I was shaking like a leaf and the police officer asked for my ID and I gave him my debit card. <laughs> like, it, like I was giving it <laughs> so good bribe. No, and then, like, I just, I gave him my ID, and he's like, I could do, do you DUI, right, like, or, uh, like, DUI testing on you right now, but I'm pretty sure you would fail. So why don't you pull over to the side of the road and, and get a, and get a taxi? This was, like, 2002 or something. And so that was really nice. And then another time, uh, I was smoking weed with my, like, she was a, like a friend from like my childhood. She came, she didn't smoke like really at all ever, I think. And this was her first time and she took this humongous hit. Like I was kind of pissed off her at first because she like torched the whole bowl. You know, it was her first time. She didn't like, she just like, and she went in, had this huge a asthma fit and like, like almost went into this like weird seizure kind of like, she was like saying numbers and like, weird hand movements and and then like she just like freaked out and she stopped breathing and I don't know I don't know it's almost seemed behavioral but anyway when she stopped breathing I called 911 and and then uh then she woke up when I was calling 911 and I came like okay well I, I was in the, talking to the dispatcher and I'm like well she just woke up I'm gonna just drive her to the emergency room the dispatcher kept asking are you on drugs I never going to answer a question and uh, and then um, I, she she was awake, so I walked walked her out to the car. And then when she got to the car. She's like, "I'm not going." And she said, "No, I'm not going." And we 
she, she I should have made her go. I don't know if I could have, but then she went back to my apartment and it started all over again. And I had to call 911 and, and uh, the police officers came and I, I told them that we had, I'd smoked like five bowls that day and, and she had smoked the same stuff that I smoked and should, and they asked her, like, did you smoke a joint? And I'm like, stupidly, I'm like, no, it was this glass bubbler here. <laughs> They're like, oh yeah, we'll take that. Um, but they just, they could have given me the state charge, right? Uh, which would have been like, it would have taken my financial, I was in school at the time, it would have taken my financial aid and been like a $500 fine. But uh, they gave me the municipal citation instead, which is like an 80 buck fine and not, it wouldn't go really on like permanent record or anything like that. It's more like a parking ticket. And they're like, well, you seem like a nice kid and your apartment's clean. My apartment is usually trashed, but since my friend was coming, I, I cleaned up and I made it really nice. And they're like, since it's clean in here, anyway, thanks Susan. Thank you for saying you love my hair. So yeah, I don't know. I, <laughs> I've had pretty decent experiences. Oh, hey, Alexandra. Hello, hello. Should I call you Alexandra or Susan? Is Man Mantani's here too? Hey, Mantani. Yeah, Madison Police Department's pretty liberal. Not traditionally though, I guess they were like, back in the 60s, they were like, I don't know, sort of like blue collar versus like the, I don't know, white collar university kind of people, I don't know. I just remember like, cops beating students and stuff. And that, or hearing about it in the city. Whatever. Oh, that sucks, Jambo. No, and even on the other time when I got hauled off to jail, they were pretty nice to me. Even though they took, they weren't nice to me at first. But like then once the officer got to know me, he felt bad for me, I think. Uh, yeah, they hauled me off for, uh, I was living with this guy and, uh, and I don't know, he's just like, I've talked about this before, but he was sexually abusive and I don't know, he raped me one time and, and I was like, I was screaming, we got in this argument, I was screaming at him and he's like threatened to call the cops and then uh, I was doing whippets too, so like, like my inhibitions were lowered. I was, screaming at him and he's like uh i'm gonna call the cops i'm like go ahead fucking call the cops you raped me blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and uh so then he called the cops and he's like yeah here's the way it's blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's like it's not illegal and so uh and uh but he's just such a fucking narc fucking i hate this dude uh and he's like you know, tattling on me to the cops and, <laughs> and then, so then they uh um charged me with disorderly conduct dis domestic and Wisconsin has very specific laws about anything domestic. Uh like if it's as like if it's assault, they don't necessarily have to take you away or if it's uh or yeah, assault or battery or anything like that. But, like those don't. I don't think they all automatically have to be taken to jail. But if it's anything domestic, 
you automatically have to, you know, even if it's disorderly conduct, yeah, somebody has to go to jail. So I got to go to jail. And, but the, when I was in the, uh, in the back of the cop car, like the cop was really jerked to me because after the whippets and everything. And, uh, um, I had my HIV meds in the, my pocket. He's like real suspicious of those. And, but then once I was sitting in the back of the car, uh, he's like, I, I was still working at the time as a psychiatric nurse and his mom had been a psychiatric nurse for like 40 years or something. And so we had that in common and he was telling me about how he was divorced because uh, I was telling him, I guess told him, <laughs> I was telling him all about uh, this asshole that I was living with. He's like, you need to, I can, he's like, like, he had a really hard time with his divorce and he, but now he had a new house and he's living with someone else and, uh, and the, the cops were talking to the people at the jail, like, oh, you gotta get him out of here soon. And they were saying, you know, like, we don't want to throw a charge on somebody who's got a job here. Uh, so I don't know. And the charges got, they're like, the charges will get thrown out. Don't worry about it. And he's right. They did. It was okay. April is all right. I'm enjoying myself. It's been awkward at times, but. I'm not sure what DV. Domestic violence changes everything everywhere in terms of arrest or release, even separate cl criminal divisions and judges. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's not in my record at all. I don't think. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> it all got dismissed. They showed up, and uh, at the court, and they, uh, I'd written this long letter, but like uh, when I got in there, I was supposed to be there at eight in the morning, and they, they list, ran out a list of a whole bunch of names, and said once they said that, it was like those are all dismissed. I figured it out. Yeah, that, that was a shitty day because I'd done the whip hits and then I was just like getting arrested. It was like almost gave me a stroke and I just had this pounding, pounding headache the whole time I was at the jail. I was like, I felt like I was dying. Oh, and I was like weeping like a baby. <laughs> I think I held it together once I was actually in the holding cell. But I felt like, you know what, I felt like I was like, it felt like I was a... Uh, a dog in a kennel. That's what it felt like. I think no matter how loud I barked, <laughs> that the jailer wasn't even gonna look at me. <laughs> like no one's gonna make eye contact with you even. It's like no matter what you do. Uh, when I called my wife, we weren't living together at the time. And she was going to call my friend and uh, she got a hold of my friend apparently and she and my friend decided that she didn't want to come. She apologized later on and she was like, you know, because I've helped her move lots of times and we've been friends since high school and uh, she really regretted not picking me up, I guess. But my wife didn't even tell me that and she just went back to sleep. I don't know, I just felt, I was really, uh, just bringing up bad memories. <laughs> Thank you, E. Daniel. I think I'm gonna just take my pill and go to bed. All right, if I'd have people take only one thing away from this show, it would be the knowledge that HIV is preventable. If you're HIV negative, there's a once a day pill you can take, they call it PrEP, or pre-exposure protocol. The pill is Truvada, and if you're HIV negative, you take it once a day. And it works like a highly effective chemical condom. It prevents HIV, but if you're already HIV positive like me, treatment is prevention. By taking my medication every day and maintaining an undetectable viral load, it makes it so I'm not contagious. Danny, Danny Snow, thank you for your support. Hey, Michael Wright, good to see you. It makes it so I'm not contagious. You equals you. Undetectable equals untransmissible. You could fuck me bareback all day long and never catch HIV from me. It's a brave new world. The future is now. It's 1969. Free love. Woo.
pill number 1032 down the hatch. Thank you, Daniel. That sucks. That sucks, Ezra. All right, pill number one, 1032. Oh, thank you very much, you Daniel. <laughs> kind. All right. <laughs> oh, that's a good way to end. Thank you for making me blush. All right, good night, everyone. I love you all. Mwah. I got low connection there for a second. Hopefully the pill swallowing went down. All right. I swallowed the pill just in case it didn't come through. All right, I love you all. Bye.